How can you achieve and maintain business growth? Harvard Business School Executive Education is now accepting applications for a new program, Driving Profitable Growth. Taking place in Boston from October 25th through the 28th, this program focuses on business expansion and organizational growth strategies that can lead your company into the future. Learn more about this three-day program for senior leaders by visiting hbs.me slash growth. That's hbs.me slash growth. Blog Talk Radio. Hey, after good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Friday edition of Sin's Chat Corner. Today, I'm so very pleased and proud to announce that I'm going to be interviewing Matthew from the very new hit sensational band in Canada, excuse me, called Western Avenue. Forgive me, it's been a kind of a rough Friday, but I'm so very glad that all of you have joined us, and I'm very, very excited that we're going to be having him on the line shortly. Just wanted to pass along a few things for you. Uh, if any of you have not had an opportunity to check it out as of yet, uh, Sin's Chat Corner is not only on Blog Talk Radio, but I also have an actual Facebook page located with the same name. And if you wish to find us on Twitter, we are on at S-A-N-D-B-1-1-1 for Twitter. And like I said, also on Facebook, I have a personal page as well, which is C, uh, excuse me, Cindy, and the last name is M-I-C-H. So without further ado, it looks like uh, we might very well have Matthew on the line. So let's click on him and let's get going on the interview. Hey, Matthew. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing well, actually. I saw you on the frontier and then you disappeared on me and then you came back again. That's right. I'm here now. Yes, you did. Yeah, so this is good. I've heard some very nice things about you, actually, from Deborah, your publicist. She tells me that you're oh, very witty, you're very clever, and very charming, and very handsome. Is that all true? Ooh, that's, uh, that's quite the compliment. I'm going to have to thank her for that one. <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact. I was like, oh, my God, who am I going to get to talk to you here on a Friday? I'm kind of, like, psyched up here in Little Milwaukee. With oh, that. But... So is it true? Are you all those things? Um, that is a good question. We'll have to let the listeners decide that, I guess. That's a very good idea. Okay, that sounds terrific. I've come up with a compilation of a bunch of different things to ask you, some of which are about yourself, some about the band, and, of course, obviously some about your band band mates, excuse me, who are not online today. Perfect. So, let's start off. Now, although I am certain that you are unaware, Canadian musicians are um, some of my favorite kinds of folks. I've interviewed a number of them, both male and female, and... First of all, you guys are very attractive. I've always said that. I'm like, what's up with the Canadians? It's in your water. (laughs) You're all good looking. You're all talented. I'm like, what the hell? And I was looking and thinking to myself, Brian Adams, Neil Young, Pat Travers, all hail from Canada. I'm like, that says something right there when you've got such exorbitant talent. Um, In your opinion, what do you think Canadian artists possess in the way of musical capability that differs from maybe some of the U.S. staples? Do you notice a difference just because of opportunities, training, things like that? Uh, I, I personally find that things up here, we're, we're like a very well-knit community. Um, we seem to have, uh, there's a lot of Canadian artists that are trying to help out other Canadian artists, uh, which which is really nice up here. Um, yeah, that's. I guess that would be the the answer to that question. Um, it just seems, yeah, everyone everyone loves to play, and uh, it's just something that we, uh, we're very... We, we take a lot of pride in, and, uh, okay. and hopefully we project that to the world in a good manner. Oh, certainly. And did you also know that there's a lot of WWE wrestlers that hail from Canada? Just going to throw that out I, there you, as well. In fact, you know, what's, you know what's Chris funny? Carroll, I actually, right? I actually did know that. Yeah, that is that's crazy. Really? And funny, <laughs> funny enough, from uh, from Peterborough, our one of our hometowns. Uh, there's quite a few wrestlers that come from Peterborough, which is which is shocking See? too. So See? yeah, it's weird. Exactly. It's really weird. Exactly. And I think now if if memory serves me right, I want to go out on a limb and say Chris Jericho, who's obviously a WWE wrestler. I saw he hails from Canada, and he's in that grand, that group uh, Fozzy, right? I, he's a musician. That is I correct. That. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he's so in a he's in a heavy metal group, which is cool. Oh, exactly. I've never heard his music, but I'm like, okay, I'm one step closer every day to get into those because I got two boys at this home who will kiss the ground I walk on. Any WWE wrestler doesn't really matter. So they're going to be excited I talk to you today because you're from the same place. They're going to be like, Mom, that's major. Awesome. That's right. Um, That's right. Yeah. So now, since Canada, I can't talk today, by the way. I'm just having a hard time. It's Friday. It's late in the day. I apologize. Um, (laughs) Canada is your native territory. So is it conceivably possible to envision that you'll be more or less a permanent resident, or are you thinking, boom, we're going to get this great tour, hit the United States? What are your thoughts? 
I think eventually our, our main goal is to definitely hit up the states down the road. Uh, I know our basically our three-year plan right now is to, to stick things in Canada and really make a name for ourselves up here and then uh, hopefully branch out into the U.S. territories and do some uh, do some touring like in the in the northern states. So uh, we want to probably my, my family's from uh, Newfoundland actually so we want to basically hit up Maine and Massachusetts and New York and those uh, those states up near the border. So that's that's the uh, that's the plan. Probably you know three to five years from now. But uh, like I said, within the next three years, we just uh, we're really focused on our own backyard and really uh, making a go of it here in Canada. Sure. And I would gather, or at least I would ascertain, because obviously most of your performances are in Canada. Would it be a safe assessment to say that you're largely accepted, obviously, in your own backyard? And, and do you have any reservation about coming to the United States and seeing what kind of success you're going to have here? Do you think um, it's going to be more challenging for you? Uh, that, I think challenging, yes. It, it's just a, there's more uh, there's a lot more talent uh, in bands making a go of it down in the States. Um, but one thing, yeah, it's one thing that we're definitely up for, and uh, we can't we can't wait to see how things go. We actually. Uh, uh, through recording our album that just came out in February, uh, we've been hearing from a lot of people that our sound is more uh, United States kind of sound uh, right. to it, so more more along the lines of Lady Antebellum. Uh, that's that's hmm. one thing that we've we've heard a lot. So yeah, so you never know. Like we we're hoping to have a lot of success down in the states, and uh, uh, we love it down there. I actually just got back from Arizona uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, I can oh. definitely see myself buying. A property down there sometime here pretty soon so yeah sure. we love it sure. and one of the things that I know is too and just in watching your videos and looking you know at the stuff on your website just watching and looking at the three of you you look like you're combined well together you have that symmetry or that chemistry that, that they talk about where you look well on screen you look well in pictures together you look like you fit I guess you know um, so we'll find out a little bit more about that relationship as we go along here um, now, part of my fascination surrounding musicians lies in the discovery of their particular origins into their own craft. So I'd like to ask you to maybe elaborate upon what sort of education you've received musically, which is attributed to your musical genius, as well as if you ever have pursued any further type of schooling or education as it relates to this. Mm -hmm. Well, initially, my... Uh... I like I said I have a, a huge down east um, kind of connection. My my father was from Newfoundland, and it just seems it's something about Newfoundland. I think it's kind of the same way in Nashville. Uh, everyone just seems to be able to play music uh, down mm -hmm. there. So I know somehow through the genes, I feel like that kind of got passed on to myself. And uh, I grew up listening to a lot of uh, Celtic music, um, and oh. uh, which yeah yeah which is crazy. So. Uh, it's a big Canadian band, uh, Great Big C. Um, uh, they were a big influence on myself. And so, uh, just to backtrack a little bit, um, when I was 10 years old, my, my parents got me tickets to see Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, uh, which was my first kind of influence into the rock genre. And I went to see them at Maple Leaf Gardens in uh, Toronto, where uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs used to play up here mm -hmm. and uh shortly after that i bought yeah i uh, got my parents to get me a guitar and started taking lessons and that was basically my my initial um jump into the music genre just uh just taking guitar lessons and seeing <laughs> uh, how far i could go with it and uh it was a long process for me it didn't come easily and i remember i used to hate going to guitar lessons because i wasn't learning the songs that i i wanted to learn but um but eventually, yeah, stuck with it long enough, and eventually was able to pick some stuff up by ear, and just kept going forward that way, which was uh, which is amazing. And here we are. It's uh, uh, yeah, finally being able to play in a band uh, with Western Avenue, and here we are six, seven years later, and uh, things are really starting to gel now, which is awesome. It is. It's very, very cool. As a matter of fact, um, one of these things I'm always curious to ask you because I've had a number of musicians on here, some of which just brand from absolutely their origins zero musical training whatsoever. It's kind of like they picked up an instrument or they just all of a sudden picked up a microphone. Now, looking back on this, if you had to do it differently, would you have gone the same course or would you just said, you know what, let's throw caution to the wind and just have no training to it? I mean, which which do you think better benefits a musician? 
Uh, I, I truly feel like just just getting in the game. Um, so if you if you are a guitar player or you want to play guitar or something like that, just you know just get one, take some lessons, figure some stuff out for yourself, and uh, just practice as much as possible and uh, and go that route. But really, I don't know, really stay true to what you want to do as well. Um, I guess I, that would be my uh, reaction to that question. Sure. Okay. Now, I know that I must give credit to the artist, uh, Terrell and Hart, for your actual introduction to your bandmates, because that's how I understand you you met all three and became Western Avenue. Um, I believe that it was 2007, is that correct, that you all officially became a band together, or am I mistaken? Yes. Yeah, it was 2007, yeah. Okay, terrific. Now, exactly what is it about both Nikki and Keith which prompted you to become musical partners with them? Ah, well, initially, myself and Keith taught together at a music store in Coburg, a uh, little small town where I'm from. And uh, we, Keith, Keith was uh, he was well known around the music industry, a really amazing guitar player, and still to this day has gotten better, which is unbelievable. Um, yeah, so we knew each other and we started chatting. I, I used to teach uh, beginners uh, how to play guitar, and Keith taught the more advanced um, people looking to to hone their skills. And so Keith had, yeah, Keith had left that uh, guitar store and had started working with Tara Lynn Hart um, at this academy that Tara Lynn had in Coburg. And Nikki actually came down and started taking uh, vocal lessons from her. And that's basically how everything kind of uh, started. Um, Keith uh, got hired out to back up Nikki for a show, and he called m- myself. And the three of us just started jamming in uh, the green room at Tara Lynn Hart's place. And uh, just initially when we started playing, just the way our voices blended with something, uh, we knew we were kind of on to something pretty awesome. And so <laughs> funny, funny enough, the uh, the show actually never happened. Um, uh, we were supposed to play in Peterborough, and the venue actually shut down uh, around the same time. Wow. So uh, so Nikki had hired us, but we never actually played. And uh, But we still decided to you know go out and play a couple open mics and take things from there. And, uh, yeah, it seemed to gel, and there's just something about the three of us. Uh, we just seem to work really well together. It's almost like we're a family. Um, well, mm-hmm. actually, two of the members are a family, so. Right. Um, yeah, 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 so, yeah, so it, works, it works, really, works really great, and uh, here we are. I got to. Now, I'm going to make a, an educated guess here in that finding this sort of successful and precise three-part harmony, it's difficult to obtain. I mean, I'm assuming you've been in other bands or performed with other individuals. Were you able to sustain that same level of, of such a success as it relates to this, or is it just just the right chemistry between the three of you in this band? It just seems to be the right chemistry. I think we're all... Um... Uh, well, Keith and Nikki themselves are amazing musicians, and I, I seem to have a drive that just, you know, I constantly want to get better and better, and I'm trying to up my skills every single day. And I think just mm-hmm. that connection between the three of us, um, something just clicked there. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's fate, um, you know, in a higher power or something. But, uh, yeah, something just seemed to work there. And, uh, yeah, we've all played in different bands throughout the years and uh, some very successful bands as well. And just seem to fizzle out, um, either due to conflict with personalities or something along those lines. But yeah, it's just, like I said, something between the three of us just clicks, and uh, and it seems to be a really good working relationship, which is amazing. And we're all friends too, which is you know I don't think a lot of bands can really say that where they actually hang out outside of their music too, which is awesome. Definitely, I would agree with you. And and I have to just stop you because. And listening to you, I'm thinking, okay, what is that accent? Is that Canadian? Because I can tell you just have a little twinge of something in your voice. So do you actually have a Canadian accent, or is that just me being a Midwesterner? <laughs> no, I think I think it actually is a Canadian accent. <laughs> really? Okay, so you guys, yeah. you guys from there actually have this Canadian accent. How cool is that? Okay, so it's, I'm not I'm so not delusional cool. and I'm not crazy, and I haven't been drinking, so I guess, okay, we're on, we're on the same fire. <laughs> Wonderful. Yay! Oh, okay. Woo! So let me just inform your audience that um, for those that don't know, I know that Western Avenue had created the three-song demo, and as I've been fully informed, um, you possess a strong songwriting ability. So I'm curious to ask you, what part and parcel of this sample demo have been of your doing? Did you compile those yourself, or collectively do you all get together and write together? How does that process work? Yeah, well, most of the times it either comes from a, a, actually one of four ways. Um, we have an outside writer 
uh, Dave Woods, who is an amazing lyricist from uh, probably about an hour and a half from where we live. He uh, he he'll send he'll write lyrics and send uh, the lyrics to either Nikki or Keith. Um, Nikki and Nikki plays piano, so she'll put like a melody towards it. And uh, Keith is an amazing songwriter as well, so he comes up with his own. I've got I've dabbled with, uh, with quite a bit of songwriting, and I've come up with some things. But um, yeah, so it kind of where the song is born, um, and initially that three song demo, I think. Uh, one of them was written by uh, Dave Woods, uh, the lyrics, okay. and Nikki wrote Nikki wrote the music to it. And one song was uh, solely written by Keith, and one song was solely written by myself. So just uh, oh. yeah, and then we just bring it to the table, and everyone kind of throws in their own parts, and uh, we go in the studio and record it, and see how it turns out. That's absolutely cool. Now, as it relates to the new EP, because, of course, obviously, I know that that happened very recently, how much of that is your doing, specific to what you write? Uh, specific to what I write, I wrote the fourth song on that EP, so without saying bye, um, that one was mine, mine, and the rest um, were collaborations between uh, Nikki and Keith, or Nikki Keith, Dave Woods, or just Keith as well. So, so we each kind of bring, it's kind of neat, we each bring our own you know, skill and talent to the um, to the band, and we're able to elaborate on, you know, like a, a song idea that Nikki brings in. Uh, Keith and myself will put, you know, guitar licks in the background and make it make it sound pretty. <laughs> sure, I understand but, um, completely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, question for you, as it relates to, and this I ask everybody, in fact, anytime a person comes on, I know they're a songwriter, because I'm an author, so of course my process might very well differ from yours. Like, for instance, when I sit down to write a show or otherwise, I mean, I'll have quiet music on and a certain pen in a certain room, there's no drinking involved, you know, things, these are just things. Do you have a particular process when you decide you're ready to create some new material? Uh, it's for me. For me personally, I I need to be kind of in solitude, um, and just with my guitar and a pen and and paper. And once okay. once those ideas come, I can't stop. Like I've got to either finish it or else it doesn't get finished. Um, I know uh, Keith would probably tell you if he was on today. He writes. Um, you know, he'll either go out for a walk and hear a melody in his head, and then come back to the guitar and pick up the guitar and, and work from there. Um, gotcha. Yeah, so each one, yeah, each one of us has their own little ways of doing things. I know Nikki, uh, Nikki was just oh, probably about a month ago. Uh, she had gotten some more lyrics from uh, Dave Woods and was up probably until about 2 in the morning uh, finishing the song. So I think it's the same with her, too, where it's just, you know, once you start it, you need to complete it in that one sitting or else the idea is gone. <laughs> I imagine so, and I understand full well because I get writer's block half the time, and now half the time I'm in a bar writing it on the napkin so that I don't forget about yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> those, those are one hey, of the fun and before I forget, oh, that's it. Tell me about it after two or three glasses of wine. It's like, oh yeah, this is really making sense. Now let's go after this one, right? Um, I didn't want to forget to ask that question. What's up with I get one band member out of three? <sighs> I, was a little I know. I know. What's going on? Where's the rest of the band? Where's Western Avenue? Hello. Where are they? <laughs> I guess the timing uh, is actually, right. That's okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, that's they're okay. Actually, are they um, busy? That's fine. Yeah, no, they they are. Actually, Keith is, uh, Keith is teaching guitar lessons, I believe. And I think okay. Nikki, uh, like some of us still have day jobs right now, too. So right. in order to yeah. uh, to make a real go of this, we need some money coming in, too. So uh, I believe sure, Nikki's... No one uh, yeah, Nikki probably just got off work, so she may be tuning in right now, which is awesome. Oh, my God, would that be absolutely awesome. Hey, Nikki, yeah. if you're tuning in, dial the number, dial, because we'd love to talk to you. See, I was afraid they were, like, heard my other shows, and they know I'm a smart ass, like, 90% of the time. They're going to be like, I want to talk to her. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't care how much funny. exposure she's giving me. Forget that crap. Okay, and just uh, so you know, Matthew, I'm extremely <laughs> excessively sarcastic all the time. But it makes for great fun, doesn't it? We need to have a little fun oh, on the show. Otherwise, it's drab, boring things. Both a good Okay. Right. Yeah, ex thank you very much. Okay, so to most that don't know you, of course, uh, you are obviously a singer. You're also a song production writer, and those are just two of the feats in your life. A third element, of course, being guitar playing. Maybe weigh in on this for me as far as if you could just rank for me a few of your favorite guitar players of all time and if they were influential in your career choice at all. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I, it's funny because I, it, it's kind of weird that we're all playing country now. I know Keith initially had a lot of uh, country influence when he was growing up, but um, myself and Nikki, I believe, were more kind of come from the rock genre. And so okay. growing up, I listened to a lot of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So Mike Campbell uh, from the Heartbreakers, he was one of my idols. And I, I sincerely loved his guitar playing just based on the fact that he, like, he wasn't too flashy, but he would do exactly what the song needed. So if it was some melodic um, uh, picking pattern in the background, he would do that. Or just really, um, not, nothing too flashy, but just unbelievable. So he was definitely one of my... Uh, heroes growing up, and I, I still try to emulate some of his guitar playing, which is um, which is one of a kind, I truly believe. Uh, so yeah, he would be the main one. I also listen to a lot of, um, uh, I would say, uh, Joe Satriani. He's an amazing guitar player. Uh, I went to see him live at Massey Hall in Toronto, and he kind of blew my mind. And I was like, wow, this, you know, you know, the guitar can be played like this as well. Uh, so definitely, uh, definitely those two, a huge influence on myself. I gotcha. And did you happen to come from a musical background, meaning your family, siblings, things like that? I, I have a yeah. My uh, my mother actually she used to uh, sing in a choir, uh, so she was always singing when I was growing up. And uh, I remember like just childhood memories actually singing with her um, when we go to ball games and stuff like that. Just when I was like really young, so like four or five years old. Um, yeah, yeah. So that was that. And then my dad, my dad's from a. Uh, Newfie family, so Newfoundland, um, and a lot of his uh, actually nephews are are very musical. So I don't know if there was music in the family there, or just skipped a couple of generations. But for some reason, a lot of my cousins uh, seem to be in bands and playing different instruments, and have gone on to be quite successful, which is really cool. Yeah. Now, have you personally? Have you ever had your own inclination to maybe to learn how to play other things musically? I mean, any kind of other instruments or kind of expand your horizons a bit? Yes, definitely. Actually, over the last uh, last couple of years, ever since we started really taking this seriously and recording a bit, I've got into a bit of uh, uh, mandolin and uh, some basic banjo stuff. I actually started uh, starting out before I even picked up the guitar. I uh, uh, My parents kind of forced me to take piano lessons so I took piano for a couple years and uh, that was kind of the basis for everything Uh, so I started when I was probably six years old uh, taking piano lessons which was uh, pretty amazing and and like I said just kind of opened my eyes to what I could do out there too so yeah so I've been doing that I play bass guitar Um, just yeah I'm I'm just trying to add to my repertoire (laughs) all the time How's that working out for you? Because it sounds to me like you're going to become a dynamite package then. Because you've got really basically what most people would say musically is is the you know dynamic three there, which obviously is of course your songwriting, your singing, and then playing an instrument. You combine all three of those, and that's amazing. And plus two, you're all diverse in that you each have your own particular talents, and so you just you blend so well. I mean, I'm so lucky. Recently, obviously, I was given the opportunity to listen to just a collection of different music from Western Avenue, of course, and. I guess I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb, and like you just said, I hear it. I hear the Lady Antebellum thing, the likeness to it. I just do. I mean, I adore Lady Antebellum. I mean, you're obviously different, but I can hear it. I can I can recognize it within that, and it's not just that. It's just the, obviously, of course, the guy-girl thing, that kind of stuff. Like, for instance, the single, This I Promise You, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah. Uh, to me, <laughs> it, was, it it presents itself to be a very well-written soft ballad, and the video which accompanied it was just ingenious, in my opinion. I was really drawn in by it. You know how you can watch a music video, and then you get, like, bored in the first minute and a half, like, okay, I get the point already? This really mm-hmm. kind of captivated me. I liked the story behind it. It was really good, except for one thing. Oh, my God, the look on your face, I thought you were ready to kill someone. So I had to ask him, like, is this guy this somber constantly? <laughs> he looks so <laughs> serious in this video. <laughs> Do you never notice yeah. this? Go back and watch. No, no, like, we did, oh. we did for sure. Yeah. Okay, so it's not just me. I'm not crazy here because I'm like, oh my god, thank God this interview is not in person because I'm like, I'd be frightened silly. I'm like, is he like this all the time? <laughs> <laughs> a little scary. Um, oh, that's funny. So I got to ask, uh, this particular song is it reflective of any form of a personal experience of uh, yourself or one of the people? What's the inspiration behind this? 
Yeah, definitely. This this song, this I promise you, actually comes from a bit of a dark place, and uh, that was Keith, one of his uh, friends at the time, was going through a pretty abusive relationship and uh, just couldn't get out of it. And um, just due to her religion and other influences going on, so uh, so Keith wrote this song, this I promise you, about that, and basically. It's kind of uh, the message behind the song is, you know, stuff happens in life that you can't really control and you just got to, you know, stick it out and try and stay as positive as you possibly can. And eventually things are going to turn around for you. And uh, so this song was written about that. And that's that's basically why you see us so serious in the video as well. Um, that was one thing we decided sure. for. Yeah. One thing we decided before we went in was, you know, maybe limit the amount of smiling and and the happiness in the video and kind of come from a little bit of a darker angle uh, just to really make sure that that, uh, you know, that theme kind of hit home. And uh, and what we've been hearing about the video, too, is people are, you know, people are relating to it. And uh, a lot of that stuff goes on in the in the world and, you know, it, people can't really control it. And like I said, you just got to, things are going to get better. You just got to stick it through and just know that, uh yeah, have your have faith in something bigger than what you are. Definitely. And I'm going to take my sarcastic personality away for two seconds just to say it really is very well done. It's very, very beautiful, actually. I was sitting here last night going through it again and just kind of, you know, putting background music on. And I'm like, you know what, this is really very relaxing. It's very well done. It's very well performed. It's very tight. I liked it very, very much. I have to say that. Um, just throwing that out there. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, you're quite welcome. Um, now, this is a personal observation that Sin has, so we'll see if you concur with this or not. I've always tended to notice, um, well, in, the, in particular, like, for instance, your band's music seems to kind of correlate to my belief in that country music can be two things, meaning both spiritual in nature, but yet nine times out of ten, I hate to admit it, but it's oftentimes very somber type music, meaning my cat died, my dog died, my girlfriend left. You know, I guess I'm curious to get your take on that. Do you think that country music as a whole kind of personifies that image, or are you thinking maybe now with the invention of the new country rock, things are changing a little bit? I, I definitely think things are changing uh, quite a bit. And now country as a genre, you can cover so much material. Um, you can write those songs about your, you know, your dog being killed by a truck kind of thing. And, and, but you can also, yeah, but you can also, you know, touch on the rockier stuff and, you know, the, the sex drugs, rock and roll thing that, that rock used back in the seventies and eighties. Uh, you're seeing a lot of that in country music today. Um, it's, I think, I think it's a good thing in the long term. It's just really opened up, uh, people's minds and I think you can grasp on to any single idea that you want now and turn it into a song and not be afraid to put it out to country radio. Um, yeah, so I, th- I, I truly think it's a good thing. And, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. Let's talk a minute about, um, obviously, I wanted to go back maybe in your history or along the course of the time you've been together. I know you've produced such hits as My Rebel Heart, Standalone, and, of course, Without Saying Bye, which we had mentioned. I want to ask you, how is the tone and the style of those particular songs compared to the selections that you have on your new um, EP? Yeah, well, those, um, like I said, those those songs we did in uh, December of 2008, and that was our really our first time in the studio. And looking back at those now, it's kind of, um, you know, it's good and bad. Like, we can see, it's, you know, that we've come along a lot better as songwriters and the production-wise that uh, we recorded these songs with has been fine-tuned, and we've really grown uh, throughout that period. Um, actually, the couple of those songs you may actually see on uh, future albums as well. We're going to go back and re-record maybe two of those um, just to uh, basically put our stamp on it, because at the time we didn't, we were new to the whole recording thing, so we didn't really know that we could ask a lot of questions and really get our input in it as much as possible. So, um, yeah, but just seeing the reflection between uh, that initial EP, or sorry, that initial demo CD and the EP that we just came out with has been night and day, and uh, we're so pleased with um, how our you know, our debut EP turned out that was released in February. And it's, uh, yeah, we're hoping that it really catches on. And so far in Canada, it's it's doing a great job, which is amazing. Yeah, I was a little worried. I was going to ask you today. I'm like, oh, my God, what if I can't get a copy because it's, like, sold out already? I was a little freaked out about that. So but I'm assuming it's still available. <laughs> Whew, close call there. Man, that was going to ruin my whole weekend, so thanks a lot. 
Okay, oh, there you go. Don't worry, we'll keep talking about that one. We get a whole bunch of information here. I just kind of dart around from place to place, talking about a little bit of everything. This way, then they all know what you're all about, left, right, and sideways. Like, for instance, selection uh, entitled Highway Heading Out of Town, which is, of course, in July of 2012, I think is best described as um, a tune that discusses following your dreams. Um, for you personally, has Western Avenue served to assist you in that goal? Oh, definitely, hands down. Um it's funny enough, actually, last March, uh, about a, actually a year ago, last week, uh, the three of us sat down, and we've been we've been a band for uh, six, seven years now. So, and we've been doing a lot of, um, you know, like bar shows and and things like that. And we're like, you know what, guys? Like, we've got this talent. We all want to do this. Let's actually make a go of this and see what it becomes. And uh, it was that decision last March that actually led to. Uh, everything that we're seeing right now, uh, which is which is pretty awesome and pretty crazy. So yeah, definitely. I, I know for the three of us personally, uh, we're following our dreams right now. This is what we've wanted to do ever since we were little kids, and uh, I think just the timing wasn't right before. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a remarkable journey, and uh, the success of Highway Heading Out of Town that we released in July just completely blew our minds because that was our first real uh, release to radio. And it got picked okay. up by, I believe it was 50, just under 50 Canadian stations uh, that played it in rotation and a couple uh, heavy rotations as well. So it was getting played uh, about 21, 22 times a week, uh, which was unbelievable. And uh, it was pretty crazy. I remember the, the first time we actually heard it on the radio, um, I was doing an interview with uh, uh, a radio station down here. And I actually hung up. I was so excited. I hung up on the radio once we were playing our song because I, I was so pumped up and it was just a it was one of those surreal moments that you you know you just put so much work into something and uh just to see it come true it, it was unbelievable and we're we're pretty pumped about where this road's taken us and uh yeah we're we're pretty excited for the future very cool way way cool Yes, I get a surreal moment like five minutes right before I go on air with every person I ever interview. It's a neat experience. It's like, oh, my God, this is so cool. And, yes, I was petrified before I came on air. I'm petrified every time I talk. So you're actually quite harmless. <sighs> I was a little nervous. <laughs> so I think we're doing well. <laughs> um, right. You kind of answered this question, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose it anyways. Um, your dreams, do they ever include anything non-musical as far as a profession? Did you ever consider doctor, lawyer, the typical, anything different? I actually did, yeah. My uh, so I grew up. My dad was a firefighter, and I actually went through school to become a firefighter, and got hired as one. And uh, just you know, a twist of fate, I kind of knew that music was my ultimate passion and something I really wanted to pursue. And just with the way that the schedule kind of worked with the firefighting career, um, you had to work a lot of weekends and things like that. Um, I definitely knew that that wasn't kind of the road for me, so I ended up switching over to uh, to a business department, and uh, basically, you know, your typical nine to five, Monday to Friday job, just so I could go out and play music at night and chase my dreams and chase my passion, and uh, yeah, so I, yeah, it's kind of it's taken a different road initially, but I know if I was a, a firefighter right now, I wouldn't be as fulfilled as you know doing the music thing. Gotcha. And what a shock here, folks, because, right, what would you think you're doing, firefighter? Because, of course, all the talented, attractive people are flipping firefighters. They used to work for the city as cops or firefighters. I kid you not. It's like, you ever notice that? Everyone who's a firefighter is never ugly. I'm like, what a shock did you go that route, right? Not. Okay. But I was sure it's bad. So thank you. Okay, I have to be nice now. Uh, that's what, that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll blame it on my dad. There you go. Thank, you, thank you. See, we've established that. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now I have noticed that uh, since the year 2010, you have had a secondary role in that you are the founder and director for the Giving Foundation of, please say it because I don't know how to pronounce it. Northumberland. Thank you very much. Now, for those that don't know, the mission of this organization is to assist charities by way of creating fun and unique fundraising programs. Now, two things. Do you feel that this has been deemed successful in your eyes, meaning it's been a successful venture? And what prompted the formulation of this endeavor? Uh, actually, thanks for bringing that up. Um, that's something My that job. I'm... My job. You're welcome. 
Yeah, I, that's something I'm very proud about. And uh, I founded that with uh, a man out of Coburg, uh, Doug Bates, who is an amazing uh, entrepreneur. And uh, this guy has a heart of gold and just gives back to the community as much as possible. So uh, we we decided that in Coburg and Northumberland is the county. So it covers uh, three or four different towns and cities. Um, we decided there, there, you know, there is a need in our own backyard to give back to the community and support some of these local charities that needed money um, just to be able to put back into uh, uh, things. For example, uh, the Northumberland Child Development Center, where uh, they give money to um, uh, a whole bunch of different causes, but really focus on the children in the community. Uh, yeah, so we decided to... Basically, every single year, we, we take three charities uh, and we raise money for them. And we're actually happy to announce that uh, uh, last year we raised, I think it was just over $8,000 uh, that we're able to give back to these communities. So what we do is we um, we do, like, charity events. We'll put on concerts. Uh, we raise money. Uh, we get donors and um, just direct that money back into the charities that need it the most in Coburg. Wow. Very impressed. Yeah. Majorly yeah. impressed. That, that is absolutely awesome. Thank you. Thanks. You're quite welcome. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself now, obviously, of course, with each foundation or organization, it's not run by one, but run by many, of course. If there's anyone that happens to be listening today that has a, a particular interest, per se, and maybe volunteering or contributing in some fashion, are you ever in need of things like that? Like, for instance, those that aren't in Canada located, if they still want to do something, are they able to do so? Uh, yes, you can actually find us on uh, Facebook, I guess would be the best way to get a hold of us, and it's the Giving Foundation of Northumberland, and then just send us a message um, through there uh, if you're looking to donate or get involved in some way. We're always looking for people to help out. Um, and like I said, like a lot of the money goes towards uh, like the children in the community who are just, you know, they can't afford, their parents can't afford food or um, even even things as simple as milk, like just getting milk to the kids so that they have enough, you know, nourishment to get through the day and and make healthy life choices, kind of thing. So, sure. um, yeah, yeah, but definitely find us through Facebook, or um, I'll even uh, I'll send you some information after the show too if you want to give to your listeners. Oh, that would be absolutely awesome. I would appreciate that because, of course, Perfect. just to preface this, since you kind of walked into that, just so you know two different things, which I'll cover at the end as well, which is. Um, at the end of this interview, I will certainly post all any and all ways to be able to find you on social media. So I'll put it on my personal page. I'll put it on the show page. I'll put it on this page. And then this way, then everybody will be able to find you in each and every outlet available. Um, and just so you also know, when this interview is finished, it becomes an archived episode. So even if people weren't able to come and listen to you today, they can go back all year round at any given point in time and go ahead and listen to it. And um, we're working on getting it out onto YouTube. So basically, then it will be both on Blog Talk Radio and you get more of a National exposure on YouTube. Just a little FYI, in case you didn't know that. Um, I'm also going to assume that your publicist didn't tell you anything about my show at all. I'm gathering. I, she did a little bit. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you why. The reason I say this is because I make it a point nine times out of ten to find something embarrassing to talk about. So this Ooh. is your moment, Matthew. So here we are. I love it. I love it's it. Bring it on. Bar- it's bring it on. Embarrassing questions. Okay. First of all, let's face it. Only a village idiot who has, you know, looked at your website and didn't do this in the first 33 seconds. It's like, okay, he's talented, he's smart, he's well-versed, he speaks well, and let's face it, honey, you're not hard on the – I mean, you're easy on the eyes. Goes without saying. Oh, thing. thank you for so, that. I appreciate that. There's probably like 50,000 girls that are going to flock to this interview and just be like, oh, my God, he's precious. So the $50 million <laughs> question is – and you know what I'm going to ask. So are you or aren't you? Am I or aren't? Oh, no, definitely. Um, Yeah, I've been living uh, with my girlfriend for the last uh, five or six years here. So kudos to you. That's awesome. I know. I'm definitely, definitely taken. Okay, that's a good thing. Did you hear that, ladies? (laughs) You know, please don't stop listening to me right now because they probably waited the first 40 minutes like, oh, my God, do I have a chance? Can I actually meet him? Oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. Yeah. He's a musician. I can tell you a lot. Yeah, and Christy, Christy can throw her weight around a little bit too. So, um, yeah. That's cool. You know, now has she's been, you, you know what? You know what's I funny? She, you know what's been funny? She's been a real good sport through this whole thing, and uh, I know some of the shows now she kind of stays away from just because things have gotten a little bit 
to it a little bit crazier since we've had a couple songs on radio. But uh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, that's not the success, <laughs> not the success part, but do you know what I mean? I, this leads right to my next question, which is now that I know you're in a relationship, a lot of times people have told me it's been very challenging for them to try to maintain a healthy relationship, not because of the feelings per se, but, you know, popularity and all the stuff that comes along with being more famous. Uh, do you fear that that's going to have an impact as far as time-wise and relationship-wise? Is this something that you have an apprehension about? Uh, I think for myself and Christy, both of us are really outgoing and uh, really career-driven and goal-driven. And I know this is actually one of her goals, too, is to see me follow this through, which is, you know, the support I get at home is unbelievable. And uh, like I said, she's been a she's been a champion. She's been a true sport through this whole process. And, uh, and I, I'm also, you know, I'm trying to return the favor, too, and back her up on some of her goals. Um, which we've uh, we've been accomplishing quite a bit lately, which is awesome. So um, hmm. yeah, so I don't I don't think it's going to hinder anything, and I'm sure you know the big tour she's going to be out on the road with us as well. So that's amazing. <laughs> Does she? Okay, okay, I gotcha. And just out of curiosity, is she a musician? She actually has the voice of an angel. Um, she Aww. won't sing. I know she won't. She won't sing in front of anyone, or she just kind of she's a, sh- a shower singer. So. Uh, but she has an unbelievable voice, and uh, I'm hoping to actually get her out to do a duet or something one day. I think that would be pretty cool. That would be absolutely amazing. So because we're on the air right now, is she listening? Because let's just hook her up right now. We'll just have her come right on air right now, and we'll just do it. How's that sound? I'm sure that would be. That hey, way. that would be nah. that would be a shock. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would be sweet, wouldn't it? You should have told me ahead of time, man. This is radio. This is live. We could have done this. We could have surprised her. Nice. Oh, okay. Cool. Quite all right. Okay, well, now that you've shot everything to hell for all the women, let's move along. Um, I made a <laughs> Sorry, lady. <laughs> Sorry, I can't <laughs> help it. Uh, in observation by looking at your website, I've noted that obviously almost all your appearances are carried out in Canada. I know that the next one is on March 17th as a venue. But in a very unusual twist, I had noticed that you were going to be performing on the Joey show, Josie show, I should say, on May 21st, which is actually in Chicago, Illinois. So two questions for you. What's mm-hmm. up with that? Because, hello, Canada and Chicago are, like, um, kissing, like, way opposite spectrum. And second of all, how do I score tickets? Because if your asses are going to be down there, which is 90 minutes from me, I might go running down there, you know, country. <laughs> not my okay. I know I'm not a country person. I'm like, if I want to commit suicide, I'll listen to other music. So I could make a special <laughs> exception. But go ahead. Oh, that's funny. No, we're actually uh, – that's, that's actually going to be a live interview on air so we're uh we're oh. still doing that from canada yes but we're we'll be on air uh down at the josie show so yeah so make sure oh. to uh tune into that i know and I'm you don't have to travel anywhere yeah, great you just burst my bubble this is an excuse <laughs> to go to chicago now basically you've shot that the girl he's not single i'm not going to chicago wow this has been great moving right i know i'm sorry i'll, I'll make no, it up i'm to sorry you. I am being so sassy. It's ridiculous right now. I'm just trying to keep it lively, folks. Okay, the next thing I wanted to discuss. Before we talk a little bit about the EP, which I'm sure you're excited to talk about because that is obviously new, I wanted to um, spend a few moments maybe spotlighting your equally musically talented bandmates, both Nikki English and Keith Robertson. Um, mm-hmm. What I do know of Keith, or you know, what I've found, is that he began his path to music at the age of 12 and has taught guitar for 16 years. And I found it quite interesting, and, and uh, I find it very cool that he plays the fiddle as well because that reminds me of Trans-Siberian Orchestra, which is way cool. Um, oh, they are, they are way cool. They're really oh, cool. Oh, of course. <laughs> and on the other side of the fence, Nikki um, is, is best described as a shy gal who comes from strong musical roots because I know that her father had oftentimes been singing and playing guitar when she was young, much younger. So what other tidbits can you provide to the audience about um, these individuals who are both your friends and partners? Yes. Well, uh, Keith, for anyone who knows Keith up in Canada, he's actually uh, pretty well known around Ontario anyway as being probably one of, if not the best guitar player around. Um, Keith has been hired out by a lot of Canadian country artists um, to play, to basically back them up on their tours. And uh, he's, he can play, I could, I could talk all day about Keith actually. He's uh, he's a great role model for any musician in the industry and uh, just the fact I get to play in a band with him is unbelievable. 
Um, but he's, yeah, he, he plays anything with a string on it. You give him anything, uh, the fiddle, he's a phenomenal fiddle player. Uh, uh, bass guitar, I know he fills in the odd time for, uh, one of his buddies' bands. Um, yeah, he's just, he's phenomenal and he's been playing ever since he was a little kid. And I know, uh, if he was on, he would tell you that his dad, um, actually used to, uh, play around the house and basically taught him, uh, three chords kind of thing right off the bat. And uh, ever since that day, he's just been, you know, soaking it up. And he actually went through and uh, he took a year at uh, college, uh, uh, music, uh, guitar playing at college. And uh, eventually he actually, uh, he dropped there just because he was, uh, I think he found he was progressing a little bit faster than the rest of the class. So, um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a phenom. And uh, if you get a chance, I know there's a lot of stuff on YouTube as well, where it's just Keith uh, playing. I know he's got um, students that come from all all around Ontario, uh, where we are, just to, you know, take interviews from them, or interviews, you know what I mean, lessons. No, I know and, that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so check out Keith on, uh, on YouTube, and, yeah, he's phenomenal. And Nikki, uh, Nikki used to sing with her, uh, with her dad, Frank, who um, I think a lot of the reason... Uh, Nikki's coming out of her shell. She used to be a real shy girl when she was younger, and now she's uh, <laughs> she's a talking machine. Um, she's unbelievable, and it's been really cool just being in a band with her and as one of her friends and just seeing how music has really, you know, brought her out of that shell and being sure. able to perform live on stage and just having so much confidence now. Uh, it's been truly remarkable. And yeah, but she um, she started singing at a very young age. Um, if she was on, she would tell you that she used to sing along to all the Disney movies that were out. Mm. Um, and I don't know which is her favorite one, but I think it's probably Little Mermaid or something like that. And uh, yeah, so she did that, and then she would she would sing with her dad um, uh, Frank. And then when uh, Frank actually passed away, uh, I think just over ten years ago now, and I think it was around that time she decided to really, you know step things up and kind of sing in his honor. So that really helped her get out of her shell and, um, and be able to perform the way she, the way she performs now. And, uh, she's another person who's got the voice of an angel and, um, yeah, yeah. big things are going to happen for us. And, and she's, you know, probably the main part of that, which is pretty cool. Oh, I bet. Considering you're surrounded by all these angels, for God's sake, how is it not going to be? I know. Right? I know. I mean, <laughs> this. this is amazing. <laughs> now, don't forget, you got to tell that bandmate of yours, I just got to say this much, he's got some serious ink on there, and I'm kind of digging it. I kind of like the guys with the ink, so I'm like, because I saw the video, of course, and I've seen your pictures, and your bandmate there, he's got himself some nice tattoos. That is great. Right. I'll, I'll mention yeah, that to him for sure. I pay attention to that kind of stuff, but maybe you shouldn't tell him because then his wife might kick my ass. I'm not really sure because you know they're married. And I wanted to ask about that. How'd that all come about? I mean, is that does that work well for you all? Because sometimes they say, you know, obviously business, pleasure, com- combination of both. Is there any of or complications as it relates to that, or does it mesh well, do you think? I, I it's Funny enough, it actually meshes extremely well. Uh, when the three really? of us perform together, it's not really – uh, Nikki and Keith, the husband and wife, like on stage, it's more, you know, the band, the band is the focus and that's something that we've marketed our branding around. Um, yeah, but, uh, like I knew Keith when he wasn't with Nikki and, um, just to see the way that he's been impacted and influenced, like even musically after he, uh, after he married her has been remarkable. And, um, yeah, it just, it, I don't know. There's something with the three of us that just seems to work really well, and it's and it's awesome that they're married. And to be honest, sometimes I even forget that they're married. It's just you know we're all that close, which is pretty cool. And then it sounds like a family thing, which which is of course a, it's such a blessing. And I and I honestly can tell you, most of my friends are artists and musicians like myself, and we just we're just one big happy family. Well, we're a little free spirited happy family. We <laughs> are all sarcastic, and in this town, we do all sorts of silly things at two, three o'clock in the morning. So we're way free thinking sort of thing. So it, it is all really right. refreshing, though. It's very refreshing to have that family sense because I think when you care, if you care about the music, but yet you care about one another, you care about the performance more. So you step it up more, and you don't want to disappoint anybody. At least that's what I've found. So I, I think your chemistry works really well, just from what I'm noticing, what I'm seeing, and the little I've had to be able to hear yet. 
it leaves me wanting for more. And, and that's something that makes me gravitate to a band and say, you know, I'm going to follow them. You know, not I enjoyed listening, not because, well, it's my job, so I have to, but I actually genuinely am curious to see what's going to come in the beyond. You know what I mean? Makes sense? Yeah. No, thank you. Thank cool. you very much for that. Oh, you're welcome. See, I don't want you to think I'm a rag all the time. I have to be nice to you at least once. <laughs> okay, I got two more questions for you because I'm thinking, he's thinking, oh, my God, is this over? I won't put you through No anymore. way. This has been fun, Cindy. I wish, I wish we could do oh, this in person. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, I just I just got asked yesterday for me, the interviewer, to actually be an interviewee for the first time. So I'm going to be putting well, it on. Well, that's amazing. Well, it that is. is cool. you know, and now that it's, it, it's cool, but it's like it's one of these things. Like, for instance, obviously I'm talking to Matt from Western Avenue. So I wasn't kidding when I told you. I mean, I talk to celebrities all the time. And I talk to all sorts of people. It never gets old. I never lose that passion, and I'm always afraid. I am always afraid. And before I forget to say this to you, thank you for doing this interview today. And I say this because right before I came on the air, actually, I had some devastatingly bad news, and I, I really honestly did not want to do this interview. And you've made this a joy and a delight for me. You really have. You made me want to be very silly and sassy and a smart ass, and you let me do that very gracefully. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Oh, it's um, it's our honor. Thank thank you for having us. This has been awesome. Oh, that's just fine, as a matter of fact. So I've got only two very simple questions for you, the first of which is um, maybe talk a little bit, obviously, of course, you mentioned in February. We all know that you had the new extended play release. Um, talk to us a little bit about that, meaning um, why? Why do you feel individuals should go out there and buy your music? What distinguishes Western Avenue from any other country band out there? And moreover, what do you find most unique about these pieces of work? I, I personally, well, first of all, thank you for those compliments. Um, this You're is uh, this has been something that we've really wanted wanted to do for a long time, and uh, I think our passion really comes through on this record, and it's something that we can actually stand behind every single song on that EP and be extremely happy about, and the way it turned out, and uh, just know that we busted our butts for that, and we busted our butts for everything that we've accomplished up until this point. And um, the, the one thing that's kind of, it's, it's almost ironic, like people, people see the three of us, but they don't see the amazing team that we have behind us that has really worked hard at pushing this, you know, and getting this done. Uh, we recorded this album at Newcomb Studios out in Harwood, which is about 15 minutes uh, north of where I live. And uh, I actually went to school uh, with Adam Newcomb, the producer, and we had cool. actually talked about, yeah, it, it was really cool. We, we actually talked about doing something a couple of years ago, and uh, just the timing wasn't right. And I feel, looking back at that now, we wouldn't have the product that we do now uh, in the production behind those songs. Uh, Adam worked his butt off on this project, and uh, we're forever grateful for the way it turned out. And, um, yeah, we're just we're so pumped about it, and we feel nothing but good things behind it. And uh, we almost feel like there's like a huge community of support uh, behind this album as well. Like the, the community of Coburg, uh, which has always supported uh, myself in, you know, the charity stuff that we do with the Giving Foundation of Northumberland. And um, they've supported Nikki and Keith uh, through their musical uh, collaborations and whatnot. Uh, we truly feel that there's, we've got a lot of people behind us right now and they're almost pushing us upward. And I just wish people could see that instead of just the three of us, you know, up on stage all the time. There's actually, you know, hundreds of people behind us that we, you know, we can't thank enough. That's amazing. That is. And and what's really cool, like I said, with the music, I just, I, the, symmetry, this, the whole connection of this three-part harmony that works so well for you, it's just, I can imagine song by song by song. And I will admit I haven't gotten the new EP yet myself, but I'm, I'm welcoming the opportunity to be able to just check it out and listen to it all by myself, all alone, as it's snowing, as a matter of fact, because in Wisconsin it's snowing right now. It's perfect. Oh, wow. For it. It, it sets the tone, and, and it's perfect for any sort of environment. And even my kids would listen to some of this country music, so I'm pumped about that. Now, the last thing I want to ask you, um, if you all have discussed this at present, which I'm not sure that you have, but just looking down the road for the future of Western Avenue, what what do you want to see happen? What is your ultimate goal here for the band? Our our goal is to make this happen, and I don't think we're we're not going to stop until we actually can 
leave our day jobs behind and make a true go of this. And that's something that I know we're all passionate about and something we've wanted to do for a long time. And what we're going to do is continue to write great songs and put out, you know, EPs and singles and just really, really make a go of it because we, um, there's nothing else that we'd rather be doing. And it's something I believe the three of us were born to do. And we're going to, we're going to see it through and we're pretty excited about it. Yes, and hopefully in the course of this interview, we've gotten interested parties who are actually excited for you because that really is the whole point of doing this sort of thing, to build you some momentum and excitement to let people know that, hey. So before I forget, we need to do a couple things before we wrap this up. I mean, there's like 18,000 social media ways to find you, so I'm going to rattle off this list. And then I appreciate it if you would kind of tell me, dude, I have not seen a band in like a while. It's got like 75 of these listed like you people, but that's a good thing. It works, you know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and list this information. If you'd be so kind when I get finished, just let me know if I missed anything. Um, I know, of course, that you have a Facebook present, which is, of course, Western Avenue. Um, your music can be listened to on YouTube. I know that you are on Amazon, Reverb Nation, iTunes, IndiePool.com. I also know that we can follow you on Twitter, which is at Western Avenue 4, and also, of course, the website being westernavenue.ca. Have I missed anything? No, that is, uh, you've wrapped it all up. <laughs> Ooh, that was a close call. I was like, my ass is in big trouble if I don't remember everything. Hey, before uh, I forget, since I know she's listening, what do you think of that PR girl of yours? You know what? She's uh, she's pretty all right in our books. I'll tell you that. She's pretty all right. She, <laughs> she actually, is one of like we, the... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. We just uh, we just got back from a radio tour with her. We were on tour last week um, for six days. Five days? Six days. Really? Uh, just touring really? throughout Ontario and doing different radio stations and live performances. And uh, we did a, a TV appearance. And uh, Debbie put that all together for us. And I know she's listening right now. And uh, we're forever grateful. That was that was unbelievable, and she's she's really taking things to a different level for us, which is uh, which is remarkable. Oh, I bet, and I'm jealous because, of course, you know Deborah and I have obviously not formally met, and we talk back and forth. And honestly, I'm here to tell you, out of all the publicists that I deal with, she's probably one of my favorites. And she's not very demanding. She's very very good at what she does. She's very succinct. She loves the same kick-ass shoes that I do. Because if you've ever been on her page, oh my God, the girl gets now. She just like she amazes me. I'm like, oh my God, and she's so passive about everything. Like, don't worry about it. And I'm like, oh my God. So hey, listen, Deborah Patricia Wood, this is what I got to say to you. A, thank you so much for all of the hard work that you do. Thank you so much for orchestrating this interview with Matthew because I'm about to tell you what I think of him. <laughs> Are you ready to hear this one? Uh-oh, um, uh-oh. <laughs> and, Deborah, we just we just love you and we appreciate you. So thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. I can't thank you enough. And just to let you know, Matthew, I'm in the process of trying to put together a bunch of different things. And if they work out for me in terms of my umbrella – you could very well see me doing a traveling radio show, in which case Canada holds a lot of my musicians, in which case you'd actually be able to do this live again if you would commit to doing so, which I would absolutely oh, insist if you didn't. Oh, yes. of course I'd be. Yeah, thank, thank you yes. so much, Cindy. Oh, definitely, definitely. I, a couple things that I wanted to touch on here. Please be certain to let your bandmates know that all three of you are welcome at any given point in time to come back. If you just want to chat with me, if you want to promote something new, if you want to tell me something exciting, if you just want to bullshit for an hour, I'm all good with that. I'm always looking for ways to have an interesting show. So I would definitely consider it an honor for you to come back. So before I let you go, I always, as a staple, at the very last of my shows, always take 30 seconds to tell my guests exactly what I think of them. <laughs> so are you ready? Well, uh oh. I I'm on the hot seat now. <laughs> yeah, you are. Okay. <laughs> the the top three words that I can think of to describe you, and in case any of the audience didn't happen to catch this, I've been very lucky of course to visit the website, so I know that obviously not only are you very handsome, but you are very talented and the other thing is you're very down to earth. You're very friendly and sociable, which I like. You have a gift for what you do and you're very humble about the fact that you carry this gift. You're very appreciative of the music that you create. You're appreciative of your band members, your genuine musical talent. And I can't say that about all the up-and-coming musicians nowadays. You guys are not flashes in the pan. You're unique. Even though you sound like Lady Antebellum, you've found a niche that suits you, which I like. Your three-part harmony is not the norm. It's eclectic and different, and it carries a passion to it that makes me want more. And I am so hoping that the audience will agree with me on this. 
I think you're a gem, and I'm just I'm very lucky to know you, and I hope that I'm able to stay in contact with you. That's it. Wow, thank you so much, Cindy. I'm at a loss for words right now. That was that was oh, amazing. Oh my God! Well, you know, when you ever get married to what's her name, Angel Face, there, you make sure to let me know, and then I might <laughs> just come on down to Canada or something like that. I, I, well, I can, we can only do... say that. For sure, that okay. sounds that sounds great. That sounds great. Even better, as Deborah will tell you, I'm in this manhunt for like oh I don't know, 15 years. No, it's been three. I, I say this to everybody. I'm like, you know, you know what'll entice me? Find me my future husband, or introduce me to Kiefer Sutherland because he's my fantasy husband. So if you can hook me up with them, <laughs> my ass will come down to Canada in a heartbeat. Just saying. I'll tell you. Oh, I'll yeah. tell you what. Next time, next time you come up, we'll. Uh, I've got some single friends that I'll introduce you to. Oh. Look at this. Now we're doing hookup on live radio. It doesn't that, get that sound like a plan. Minutes, man. <laughs> You're a sweetheart. <laughs> I can honestly wrap this up by saying I wish you all nothing but the very most of success. Again, I will certainly post all this information up online and certainly will try to push as much business as I can to your way. I just I'll be crossing my fingers and saying my prayers for you and God I hope it goes well for you. Thank you so much, Cindy. This has been an honor. All right, sweetheart. Thank you so much. You take care and we'll be talking soon. You too. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening in on my interview today with Matthew of the band Western Avenue. Let me just cover once again for you. Um, Located on Facebook Presence, which is Western Avenue. I know that you can watch their music on YouTube and also on Reverb Nation. You may also purchase on iTunes, Amazon, IndiePool.com, and, of course, their website, which is www.westernavenue.ca. And the last, of course, if you choose or if you happen to have the option to use Twitter, it's at Western Avenue 4, and that's all one word. And as I had mentioned, I'll be certainly posting all this information on my personal page and my show page so that you can go back and reference it. Again, one more time, I want to say a very, very gracious thank you so much to Matthew for taking the time um, and the efforts to come on. As always, Deborah Patricia Wood, all I can say is that I just adore you and I cannot thank you enough for bringing me all of these beautiful, wonderful clients that I'm getting to know. One more side note I wanted to mention that, of course, this coming Monday we're going to be having my exclusive interview, ironically, with another one of Deborah Patricia Wood's clients, which is uh, Drake Jensen. So please be sure to tune in, and that's going to be to, or Monday rather, <laughs> at 1 o'clock Central Standard Time. Thank you so much. And in closing, the last thing I wanted to mention to you all, if um, any of you could take 35 seconds out of your day today, I would appreciate it if you could send some good thoughts and prayers out there in the universe. Um, Someone very, very close to me, my very dear friend Brian Willett, has just been diagnosed with cancer for the second time. So I would appreciate it as a personal favor to myself if you would send some very good thoughts and prayers. And as always, I thank you so very much for your patronage. Thank you for listening, um, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Thank you. Ready? Okay. We got paper. Yes, we do. Michael notebooks, pencils, glue. We got crayons and for you. School supplies for your whole crew. Target's got everything you need to ready, set, go back to school. Ready? Okay. We got paper. Yes, we do. Michael notebooks, pencils, glue. We got crayons and for you. School supplies for your whole crew. Target's got everything you need to ready, set, go back to school.